Hey folks, I'm Chris and I'm your Commander Mechanic, here with a deck full build, where I'll walk through commanders, card choices, strategies, and upgrades for a deck from scratch. But before we get started, I wanted to let you know that you can win this deck. That's right, we'll be giving away this deck along with four other full 100 card decks and the chance to score upgrades along with cool accessories from our friends at Quiver Time. Stay tuned to the end of the video to find out how. Today, I want to walk through a full deck build based on our Color Theory White video, linked up top. We previously walked through how white relies on enhancing natural abilities with weapons or magical blessings in the forms of artifacts, equipment, auras, and enchantments. And that's the aspect that I'd really like to explore. The archetype known as a Voltron deck, where you suit up a single creature with many enhancements, is a common one in the format of Commander. But in Mono White, there's quite a few more hoops to jump through. Because White lacks mana ramp and card draw, I wanted to ensure I chose a commander that compensated for that, and landed on Danatha Capuchin, a commander from Dominaria that helps discount your equipment and aura spells. Danatha comes with several relevant keywords, First Strike, Vigilance, and Lifelink meaning that all you really need to do is pump up her power to start making her really threatening. So right away I begin by looking at the core fundamentals of deck building. Card draw, ramp, and removal. Well, white has removal in spades, and we've got some key pieces here too. The classic single target removal spells of Swords to Plowshares and Path to Exile are must includes, and I've included the versatility of Generous Gift as well, which allows us to deal with any threat that may be stopping us. We also have Board Wipes, for when our opponents manage to get bigger, better presences than us. Day of Judgment and the flexible Austere Command give us options if we want to reset, and the asymmetrical Winds of Abandon give us a big way to clear a path for a few threats to close out a game or be a single target quick fix. The other two fundamental elements, card draw and ramp, are a little tougher for white. For card draw, I want to look at some cantrips. That is to say, cards that replace themselves by drawing a card when you cast them. Unquestioned authority is an aura which fits our theme and replaces itself. Sage's Reverie, another aura, has a potentially high ceiling to draw cards, looking at the number of auras we already have in play. But primarily, our card draw will come in the form of equipment like Skull Clamp, which gives us value for our creatures dying, or Mask of Memory, which gives us big draw power for having our creatures deal combat damage. These are both win-wins. Corehaven Outfitter helps us draw cards when our equipped creatures die as well, kind of like turning all of our equipment into a mini skull clamp. I've also included Endless Atlas in the deck, for some really reliable card draw, especially if you have some extra mana to sink into it from turn to turn. For ramp, we need to rely on artifacts too. Prying Blade makes us treasure tokens for sneaking and damage, and Wayfarer's Bauble is a great colorless option for snagging an extra land. Solemn Simulacrum helps fill in both ramp and card draw options, even if we can't exploit that enters the battlefield or dies ability as much as we'd like to. Core Cartographer and Knight of the White Orchid both help us ramp as well, but only if your opponent already has pulled out ahead of you. Still, decent options considering White's weaknesses in ramp. Now, if we're making a deck that relies on artifacts and enchantments, we need to introduce some consistency. So let's see what we can do from a tutor perspective. Well, Open the Armory and Idyllic Tutor are great ways to find what we're looking for. Acclaimed Contender and Armored Sky Hunter help us dig out our libraries as well. And Heliod's Pilgrim can grab us exactly the aura we need. Relic Seeker, when it becomes renowned, can grab us our favorite equipment too. 
And it may not be a tutor by definition, but Hall of Heliod's generosity is a great way to rebuy auras and enchantments from our graveyard, stretching our value just a bit further. Okay, okay, we've got some good bones, but what equipment or auras should we include? What bodies should we put them on? Well, there is a wealth of options here, but we should be focused. Maybe equipment that encourage the aggressive and auras that encourage the defensive. We could use auras with totem armor like Hyena Umbra, which can protect a creature from being destroyed. Or Spectra Ward, which can pump a creature and give it protection from all colors. But aggressive auras like Ethereal Armor, Daybreak Coronet, and Armored Ascension are all great ways to make creatures very big very fast. All that glitters is great here too, because we'll be very focused on artifacts and enchantments. Personally, I really like Griff's Boon, since it's an aura we can cast from the graveyard. Any aura that lets us give a creature evasion and use it reliably is very helpful. For equipment, let's get punchy. Loxodon Warhammer is a favorite of mine, giving Trample and Lifelink and a sizable power boost. Forebearer's Blade gives us some reliability when the equipped creature dies, and Hero's Blade lets us auto-equip it when a legendary creature enters the battlefield. In fact, let's look at a few more auto-equip artifacts as well. Cliffhaven Kite Sail and Maul of the Skyclaves equip when they enter the battlefield and both give creatures evasion via flying. That is fantastic value. Whisper Silk Cloak and Blackblade Reforged can both be game enders, making our creatures unblockable or just obscenely big. Either way, that's exactly what we're looking for. So, apart from our commander, who are we suiting up? Well, ideally creatures that have keywords on them already, right? Let's multiply that equipment value. Sun Titan is not only great utility, but a bulky vigilant body. Giving it a reason to keep swinging in every turn and returning permanence to play make this deck hum nicely. Skyhunter Skirmisher has flying and double strike inherently, making each point of extra power even more deadly. Same can be said for Mirren Crusader. Double strike and protection from green and black? That can mean a lot of unstoppable damage. Alright, wow. So we've got a great deck shaping up. Let's fill in some holes with utility to really grease the wheels on what our game plan is. Let's cheat some costs with Sigarda's Aid, giving our equipments and auras flash and letting us sneak equip costs. Transcendent Envoy makes our auras cheaper, not to mention is a cheap evasive body. Eidolon of Countless Battles is either an aura or a creature, and can reward us by going a little wider as well. And of course, if we're making a white deck, how can we avoid a few stacks elements? That is, taxing elements for our opponents that slow down gameplay. Classics like Ghostly Prison make it so your opponents have to think twice about retaliating to your attacks. And Vryn Wingmare can help slow your opponents down while you rely on resources you already have on the battlefield. And of course, Dranith Magistrate can shut down some strategies and even prevent opponents from casting their commanders. When you're in white, you really need any edge you can get in a deck. Now, finally, when building this and each of the decks we're giving away this month, I wanted to include at least a few potential pivot commanders in the list. In this deck, I've included SRAM, Senior Edificer. While not the best body to suit up with your equipment and auras, he does serve as a draw engine when casting the majority of your deck. And I've included the new Arden, Intrepid Archaeologist. In the 99 of this list, he's powerful, but could potentially partner with another color and another commander to make this deck even more powerful. All told, this deck really helps exemplify white, aggressive strategies, playing fair, and steamrolling your opponents with enhanced creatures. 
Now, if you're building this deck and you want to kick it up a notch, there are a few things that I'd recommend to add in. The first is something to help out your mana ramp a little bit. Not necessarily ramp because we are in white, more consistency. Land tax is a fantastic add here, and the classic Smothering Tithe can't be denied. I'd add in the Tudor Steel Shaper's gift too, but the number one thing that I would add to the deck is I would improve the quality of the equipment, namely, by adding the swords, Sword of Feast and Famine, Sword of Fire and Ice, anything that gives you multiple effects including protection so you can deal reliable damage and on damage effects are phenomenal. Even better if you can suit up an on damage effect on a double striker. Remember, you can win this deck along with four others we're giving away. Five lucky winners will each take home a full 100 card EDH deck with goodies from our friends at Quiver Time, and thanks to our affiliate at Harry Tarantula. If you want a chance to win, head over to this video for more details. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and comment on which deck you want to win. We'll be doing the drawing in a few weeks, but there's no time to lose. Get in now. Let me know what you think of this list, and what would you add if you were to enhance it? Let me know in the comments below. One lucky commenter from each of these full build videos will win a prize too. Until next time folks, good luck and have fun.